Hey, deserving listeners, 90 Day Fiance. Let's watch. I really just need to know, do you love me? No. No te amo. O sea, si te quiero. Pero no te amo porque no hemos convivido tiempo. Amar es una palabra muy grande. All right, well, that's a different way of putting it than what we saw last week. So she's saying, I'm not in love with, I love you, but I'm not in love with you because I haven't lived with you for a while. So what's going on with Jimena? I think it's hard to know. So there, there, I'll put forth a few scenarios. There's others, obviously. But one scenario, I guess best case scenario, she really did love him and wanted also to be in a relationship with someone that was financially stable, that kind of thing. And by the way, I should mention that some people have emailed me that Mike has posted some racist uh, posts similar to Alina, and that is concerning. I don't know the, how true those posts are. I don't know the context around that. And from the looks of it, it's pretty awful. And what I've said in other instances around when I see this happen to other cast members is it does not surprise me. It upsets me. But, you know, I've been Asian American for my entire life and have, and obviously experienced racism not only towards me but towards people around me for my entire life. And it's not that diminished since the 70s when I was a child. So uh, the fact that you have people in my country who have racist values, particularly towards black people, um, is kind of the rule instead of the exception, particularly if you live in a certain echo chamber. And the the post that he was posting seemed to be of a particular echo chamber in my country, which has a, a track record of being pretty deplorable. And, and it's not uncommon. The kinds of t the posts that I saw him posting were not fringe. They were they have been they have become more mainstream and statistics has shown that research has shown that certain racist white supremacist anti-semitic for that example for, for, for instance ideas have become more mainstream in 2022 than they were in 2012 and we could talk about the sociology of that we could talk about the backlash of obama becoming president we could talk about the echo chambering of 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 you know because in the past 10 you know years 20 years ago if you had racist leanings there weren't there wasn't a venue for you to be brainwashed you just had to be talking to people but you know the media sources were at least more responsible back then not entirely of course but certainly not as irresponsible and as provocative as the kind of echo chambers on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and that kind of stuff. And so um, when I saw what seemed the alleged post that he made, I was like, well, yeah, because uh, just demographically, if we just take a, a census of his identities, I would have given it a pretty good chance that not only does he have those kind of views in his mind, but that he also has posted about those things given his age, given his ethnicity, given where he lives, given the way that his family kind of talks about things, um, I, I, would have, I would have guessed that it would be along those lines because that's the, that's the norm. That's mainstream now. It's mainstream now to have racist ideas. It's mainstream now to um, post those kinds of things. And so Mike has those sort of things. Do we cancel him? I don't know. You can make the call. Do I personally hate him? No, I I mean, racism is the rule, not the exception. A lot of people around me, white people will have racist ideas that they just haven't purged yet or haven't been confronted on or have some kind of vested interest in holding. If I canceled every white person who had a racist notion or had said something that was racist, I would literally have no white people in my life like that's true aside from my mom my mom's white I don't know if my mom has ever said anything she's a good person and, and smart but anyway so there's it's just rampant it's all the time and Mike is representing that and it's upsetting of course I'm not particularly upset at Mike I'm upset at our society I'm, I'm, I'm upset at the 
echo chambers and the political figures that uh, stoke those fires and cause fear in people. And then, in, you know, you, you create the fear and then you insert the solution. Uh, you know, fear, fear, fear. The brown people are coming to take your jobs. They're coming to, you know, rape your women. We're going to, you know, the brown people, the brown people, the brown people, I will save you. Vote for me and I will build a wall. That's this, it's a tactic as old as politics. It goes back centuries that that's what you do. And if you're unethical and you lack morals or you're convinced yourself, and it'll work because people don't have the ability to detect that's happening because most people don't spend their entire life studying history and sociology and psychology and they just, you know, they, they're just going along with their lives and they're being manipulated and it happens. It's been happening since the beginning of time. The weird thing is, is I thought the internet would actually get rid of that because the internet would have this ability to, uh, you know, call people out in a way. Because, you know, in the past, you just had these media companies that would just brainwash the masses. And I thought, well, the internet is of the people. It's democracy, you know. Then people can actually strike back. But I didn't, and I, and, and I don't know if anyone really knew this, or not many people anyway, that the opposite would happen, <laughs> that it would make it easier for the propagandists to brainwash the masses. I mean, that's what's so weird about it, you know, because the internet, the information is out there, but we didn't account on the algorithms and the echo chambers and the, the, the direct line. Because usually in the past, for a politician to, or a pundit to try to inject fear and then provide that solution, they'd have to go through a media outlet and there were editors and people were like, well, I don't think that's what we want to do. Now you can just go straight to, to the masses and manipulate them. And anyway, so Mike's a, a, a product of that seemingly and doesn't surprise me, upset, it upsets me. Uh, we seem to be sliding backwards into, uh, you know, uh, make America great again, right? Where racism was the norm and and was codified in law and anyway so what do i think about it yeah it's upsetting it's been upsetting my entire life and uh, do i hate mike do we think you know do i want to get a pitchfork out and cancel him and get him off the show i don't care <laughs> I do, I do. uh does Jimena have racist viewpoints? I wouldn't be surprised, not to say that she's a horrible person and thus most people have racist point of views regardless of where they grew up and so, you know, yes, we need to change that. But canceling the, the few individuals who are able to be identified of making a post and mistakenly leaving it up, by the way, um, you know, I, I guess it's part of the movement, which is okay, but I, it's not the movement, right? Anyway, so one scenario... For I'm getting back to one scenario for Jimena is that she was totally in love with him, and then at a certain point fell out of love with him, but is confused and still wants to marry him, but just wants a little bit more time. You know, it could just be the mood she's in today. You know, that could happen to feel kind of claustrophobic, like oh my god, he's here. I wasn't expecting him to be here. Oh my god, he's in my space. He's in my bed. He's in my house. He's in my life. Uh, I don't I don't like this feeling is, you know, even though just prior to him coming down here, I was totally on board. But now I, I'm getting this feeling. Like, and this is why sometimes it's important to go slow in a relationship, because for some people, they, they do get that kind of claustrophobic feeling, even though they are in love and they do want to be with that person. And there's nothing wrong with the relationship. So that could have been a scenario. Another scenario is that she never loved him and has been playing the entire time and is getting this icky feeling around him now and she just can't she's like no i can't have sex with him i just can't do it i can't i could before i just i i could stomach it before i cannot do it now and so i i just have to tell him no i don't want to sex with you i'm not in love with you but then this kicks in of like well crap but that means no more money i, I want these surgeries so i'll string so i've always been lying to him i've been more honest with him more recently because i can't have sex with him because I, I don't want to but oh crap, you know, because both times she's like, I don't want to get married, but maybe one day, you know. So it kind of lets, you know, I don't love you. No, I don't, I don't love you. Well, I love you, but I'm just not in love with you. But, you know, so that's another scenario. We don't know. I don't want to accuse Jimena of that kind of deception and that 
psychopathy, really. I mean, that is some awful, awful, deceptive, horrible behavior. I mean, you're basically a con con person, you know? So anyway, so that's a scenario. Um, yeah, I mean, there's others. But those are the two. Let's see if we get some data. I love you, but I do not love you because we have not lived together for a long time. Loving is a very big word. Okay, very briefly, another scenario is that she's never really been in love with him. And for her, given her language and culture, that word is something much deeper that you don't really express unless you're married for a while. And so that's it, another possibility as well. But when you think of everything put together, the fact she doesn't want to have sex with him, the fact that she went out till nine in the morning, the day he arrived, the fact that she just, see, you know, she's kind of rolling her eyes. She seems like she's just disgusted by him and doesn't want him around. And uh, so when you think about all that, it, it it doesn't look good. And I, what, what I would hope is that Jimena can really th reflect and figure out, well, is there a path forward for this relationship? And for my heart to maybe get rid of that icky feeling, maybe develop that love um, or not, and to communicate that to him because he, he deserves that. But at the, on the other hand, for him, he should be able to detect what's happening. And I think he is. So let's see. But you always told me that you love me and I'm your life. Pero siempre me dijiste que me amabas y yo soy tu vida. Sí, pero no te puedo amar. Amar a una persona necesita mucho tiempo de convivencia. Okay, so she's saying essentially what I was saying is the third scenario that for me or maybe even in my culture, that word in love doesn't happen until you're in a relationship, living together, married, that kind of thing. If I want you to love a person, you need a long time to live together. Just a couple months ago, Jimena was so excited to marry me. So when Jimena tells me she doesn't love me and love is too big of a word for the relationship, that makes me feel devastated and even more confused. Yeah, good. So I think he is seeing what's happening, or at least is you know, not looking on the bright side of everything, not being in denial. So that will, I think, help him. You changed so much from the last time we saw each other. Cambiaste mucho desde la última vez que nos vimos. Porque tengo muchas dudas y cosas, ¿sí? Es todo. Okay. It's good. So that second scenario where she's a, you know, she's conning him and tricking him, when she says stuff like this, that wouldn't fit within that theory. Or at least at this moment, she's not doing that. Maybe she was in the past. We don't know. We can never know what's going on in someone's heart. But for her to just say, look, I don't know, you know, things are changing for me and I don't know what's going on. So, and she's being very upfront about that. I mean, she's being... I, well, so I I don't know. I guess we'd have to ask him, Anna, when you say, when you have those caveats like, well, you do love him and you do eventually want to get married, are you sure about that? <laughs> or are you confused? Or are you stringing him along? Are you trying to soften the blow? Because there, we're hearing... Now, there's a possibility that she truly is confused, that she's had a backslide in terms of her love for him, but she still does love him and does want to get married. In term, that's kind of the verbatim of what she's saying. So it's possible, but it's, it's also possible that she's completely done with him and she's either lying to him to get money, she's lying to him because she doesn't want to hurt his feelings. People will do that. And it's not cool, obviously, but it's very common that when you're breaking up with someone, people will soften the blow so much that they actually communicate they're not breaking up with someone, if that makes any sense. Anyway, there's other possibilities. Maybe we'll find out. Let's communicate. What are those doubts? Bien, comunicémonos. Hablamos de esto luego, ¿sí? Después hablamos de esto. Quiero, tengo sueño, quiero acostar a los niños a dormir ya. Okay. 
Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Oh, Mike, you just feel so bad for him. I mean, he's being, in, in terms of his behavior in this moment, he's being super cool. He's not getting upset. He's not getting angry or aggressive. He's just like, what's going on? You know, how how you feeling? And a lot of other people on the show, you know, think of Angela or someone would just th throw everything around and yell and scream and run out of the room and break things. So he's not doing any of that. And he's seemingly just seeing what happens. You know, he is invested in the relationship. He doesn't want to throw it away just yet. And he wants to see. But boy, the signs are there. Hace unos meses me sentí súper enamorada de Mai. Tío, yo estaba súper feliz, pero no sé qué pasó ahora. Te okay, now she's going to elaborate, which is great. But she's saying, I was super in love with him and something happened. Okay, so that lends itself to that first hypothesis, that first scenario where she was legit in love with him, wanted to be with him, and something happened. And that happens. We just fall out of love. Sometimes for conscious reasons, reasons that we can identify, and sometimes for reasons we cannot identify. It just happens. Love is mysterious. So she's being upfront about that, at least to the camera and the interview. And, you know, she's basically, well, she didn't really say that to him. She said, well, I'm in, I'm, I love you, but I, I'm not in love with you because we don't live together. But then she just told in the interview, I was in love with him, even though we didn't live together. <laughs> And we hadn't been together a long time. So she's either lying to him on purpose or she's trying to soften the blow or she's still kind of confused. Yes, lo quiero. Sí, le tengo un aprecio. Pero no me siento bien con él. De que hay cosas que me incomodan, que me fastidian. Y no le puedo mentir, simplemente soy sincera con él. Yeah, good. So she's, I think... Uh, from what we're hearing in the interview and what we're hearing her say to him, I think she's on the road to telling him that she's falling out of love with him and that it's not going to work anymore. So, you know, it that, that happens. There's, there's no harm in that. If she were truly scamming him, she wouldn't have this experience, right? Because she was, if she was never in love with him to begin with and was tolerating him throughout that first visit, then why wouldn't she continue to play that game if she were just in it for the money? So it looks like she was legit in love and wanted to be with him, wanted to have sex with him. And then one day she didn't, you know? Now, what I hope she doesn't do is say, well, it's because you leave your things on the floor or you farted that one time. I mean, it's possible that that's a factor, but you know, love is mysterious, like I said, and falling out of love with someone that you used to be in love with, I mean, unless something really drastic happens, like abuse or something, it's its usually at least philosophically the way that I think about it. It's just, you know, it, it just, love is mysterious, particularly in the beginning. If, if you love someone and you're in love with someone for five years, then the chance of waking up the next morning and not being in love with them is pretty slim. But at, within just a a couple weeks of having met each other in person for the very first time. You know, some of you who date, you might experience this where you meet someone on a Tinder, you're chatting, you're like, oh my God, I'm falling in love with this person. You meet them, you're, you're in love, you're in love. Third date, boom, you're just like, ugh. <laughs> why? I don't even know why I'm with this person. And consciously you might look towards, oh, it's because of this, it's because of that. But unless there's this completely new revelation about their personality, it's possible that you just, you know, Love is mysterious. <laughs> pues no le quiero hacer daño. Entonces, por ahora, creo que necesito pensar bien las cosas. Juan, Harold. Vengan a ver. A dormir. Yeah, I think he's crying and he doesn't want to show it. It make, would make total sense that he would cry. I mean... I think he's smart enough to see what's happening, and that's pretty devastating. I mean, just being in Mike's shoes, you think you're going to marry someone, you're, and even the kids. I, I think he loves the kids. Uh, the loss of Jimena, the loss of his future, the loss of his stepsons, the loss of family, the loss of love, the loss of companionship, 
the prospect of being single again, the prospect of I'm not lovable. I mean, it's a lot of things to be sad about. Not really. No, it's the, it's, yeah, it's just the fact that um, it's just confusing to me because she always saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, and now she's changing her mind. There's many doubts. I just want to know what those doubts are. Yeah, and this happens frequently, and when I'm working with people in Mike's shoes, I say it makes sense that you want to know why and that you want to try to fix those problems. But, you know, being in love is a mysterious thing. It's probably, and again, unless it was something like he was abusive or something, then it's just one of those things. People love and don't love for very intangible reasons, things that you can't change about yourself. You know, just think about for yourself out there, someone that you were in love with and then you weren't in love with. Was there anything that that person could have done differently, behaviorally, you know, worked on something that could have caused you to fall back in love with them? You know, maybe, but not usually. And, you know, because do we believe that Mike, if he could get her to say, well, I don't like this. I don't, and she's kind of set up that uh, pattern in the past. You know, she would complain and sort of slip in terms of her motivation to be with him. He would change. He would work on it. And then she would be, oh, my God, I'm in love with you. And then they get engaged, all that kind of stuff. So I guess he has precedent to think that. But given the way she's talking now, I, if I were there, I'd be like, you know, there's a possibility that this doesn't have anything to do with something that you could change, something that a behavior that you could change or or extinguish that would cause her to fall back in love with you. Because I'm trying to work on things. She's not perfect either. A relationship is two-sided. I just can't say, hey, I'm going to change this, 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 and this. And she's not going to understand and do anything. And, and the point I want to bring up is that it's normal, but not always rational or healthy when you're in this situation to go down that road of, well, you're not giving me a chance. Or what do I need to change? Or tell me why, tell me why, and then I'll change things. You know, it makes sense. You're desperate. You're looking for an answer. You're looking something to grab onto. You're slipping off of the ship, and you're you're trying to grab at something. And as you slip into the water and drown in your own sadness, you're you're just like desperately trying to grab onto something instead of just accepting the boat's sinking and I'm 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 going out. I mean, I don't like that analogy because it sounds like you're going to die, but. Um, in terms of like the boat being the relationship is dying. <laughs> and so sometimes you just have to, so it's normal. And sometimes it would, it's, it's just the way it's going to be that the mics will do that. And it's not irrational to be like, Hey, is there anything I can do? But it can be harmful to the mics of the world. If he assumes that he didn't do something correctly or that she's not giving him a chance to make a change that would make her fall back in love instead of just accepting love is mysterious. So I don't really know what to do. Honestly, tonight, I really don't want to be here, truthfully. Yeah, that makes total sense. It's, it's analogous to, and this is a sad topic, but someone is diagnosed with a terminal condition that they are gonna die from. They have six months to live and they've done all the testing, they've done all the treatments and they for you know five and a half months are doing everything they can against their physician's guidance to find other treatments that will save their life even though there isn't anything that will save their life. And so they're wasting money, they're wasting time, they're dragging their family through all this, they're uh, not doing the things that they would have done if they knew they were actually going to die in six months. You know, they're traveling the world and trying to do all these alternative medicine things instead of wrapping things up, saying goodbye, finding meaning, that kind of thing. And so th it, it's not the same, obviously, because he's not dying, but the, uh, the acceptance of the reality can sometimes accelerate the necessary things that you, you know, eventually if this does end, he will accept it in all likelihood, right? And sometimes the earlier you accept it, the faster you can start to recover. All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.